are either howling or growling at the ratio of the number of howlers to the number of growlers was eight to three and 1001 were observed how many were growling okay so when you don't know tic-tac-toe so we're going to start with our ratio box we've got in the way they're mentioned howlers and growlers so h g and then what goes in this bottom row your total. your total. So if your ratio is 8 to 3, your total is 11. Where does the 1,001 go? The bottom right. The bottom right. So that's a total. It doesn't say 1,001 growlers or howlers. It says 1,001 were observed. So this is where the 1,001 goes. And then it's asking for growlers. So we're going to put our variable here. And then now we don't need this. So we did need that 8 to help us find the ratio total, but now we don't need it. So here's our nice little proportion that we can use the fish method. Figure that out. Does anyone have that? Nathan, what'd you get? 273 growlers. 273 growlers. Okay. So is that 91? So 91 times 11. Yep, that works. Good job. Any questions with that? Does that feel all right, you guys? Okay, good. All right, number two, Helen found that the, if the product, all right, so we're gonna translate. Product, it's multiplication. So the product of six and a number, how do you say the product of six and a number? Six N. Six N, very good. Is increased, what's that in math? Add by 12. The result is, that's easy, that's equals, three more than, how do you say three more than? Plus three. three plus or plus three feels better chronologically. And when it's less than, remember three less than, then it's whatever minus three. So if it helps you to put plus three on the end, that's good. But with addition, it doesn't matter. You can leave it three plus the product of three and and the number. So, so three plus three n. So this is the product of three in a number. Okay. So if you get this equation, I'm going to give you half credit. So if you totally mess that up from here on out, you still get half credit for translating correctly. So now we're going to follow our steps to solving equations. First step, simplify both sides. Look for parentheses, no parentheses, and look for like terms just on the same top side. So variable terms are not like terms with constants. Same situation over here. So we don't, we can move on to step two, which is if you have variables on both sides, get rid of the smaller one. How do you get rid of a smaller term or any term? How do you get rid of it? Well, that's how you get rid of the coefficient, which is being multiplied. So a term is either added or subtracted. So to get rid of three N, which is the smaller variable term, if it's being added, the whole thing, not just the three. If, it, if we were just wanting to get rid of the three of the three n, then we'd divide it. But we're going to subtract three n, subtract three n. So now we, whatever you do to one side, do to the other. Keep the, keep the um, balance scale even. So then you're left with three n over here. Okay, good. Next step, eliminate constant term from variable side. There's two terms on the variable side. There's three N and 12. Which one's the constant term? 12. Constant terms don't have variables in it. Constant terms don't have variable, that they don't change because they're constant. Okay, so then we're left with three N equals, ooh, negative nine. Right? Okay, last step, eliminate coefficient. The only thing we have left to get n by itself is that three is being multiplied. So how do you get rid of multiplication? You divide. So these will still continue to be a struggle for you if you are expecting immediate results. Okay, this is a step-by-step -step process. 
if you try to do it all like in your head or whatever and try to do it all at once and get ahead of yourself, you're going to mess it up. But each step should make sense to you. Remember the steps. You can use these steps written out if you want when you take the test. I'll let you do that. You won't have to after you do 10 or 20 of these, but if you want to use them for now, you're welcome to. Okay, good. Moving on. Number three, use four unit multipliers to convert 120 square inches to square yards. You don't have to use unit multipliers, but I want to reward you for doing so because you need to start getting used to it for science and things like that. So if you use unit multipliers, I'll give you extra credit. So we're going to go 120 square inches. So the first step to unit multipliers, I have the steps over here too. Write the first measurement as a fraction with labels. So how do you write a whole number as a fraction? Put it over one. Okay, and then step two, multiply by a unit multiplier that will cross cancel the first label. So don't look at the numbers. You don't have to look at the numbers really at really too much at all in these kind of problems. So we got to get from inches to, to yards, right? So how do we get from inches to yards? What do we go? Where do we go first? Um, to feet. To feet. Okay, so what unit multiplier has feet in them? 12 inches over one foot or one foot over 12 inches. You, those are the same unit multiplier, but you have to decide which one will cross cancel the inches label, which one? One foot over 12 inches. So cross cancel means diagonal. So the inches have to go on the bottom. So usually what you're trying to get to is on top and what you're trying to get rid of is on the bottom, okay? You're gonna look towards the future and bury the past, okay? So, but the problem is here, what's the problem? Yeah, so this is inches, inches. This is, I could say this 120 inches, inches. Okay, so we only were able to cross cancel one of these, so we need another one of these. Same thing, which makes sense because they're square units, so everything is multiplied by itself. Okay, so now we're at feet, feet, but we need to get to yard, yard. So how do you get from feet to yards? The right a little smaller here. One yard over three feet. Okay, not three feet over one yard because you need to be able to cross cancel the feet. So now those cancel and you're left with final answer 120 times one times one times yard times yard. So yard squared all divided by 12 times 12 times three times three. So 12 squared, uh, 12 squared, three squared. If you leave it like that, I'll give you full credit and extra credit if you use unit multipliers. You could multiply it out if you want. It's 120 divided by 36 squared, whatever that is, something big, okay? Um, but that's all you need to do right there. So see how we didn't really do math. We just had to figure out which unit multipliers, so which label to put on top and which later to label to put on the bottom. But that's it. If you want to multiply it out, you can. There's nothing wrong with that. And it's good to kind of make see if it makes sense. 120 square inches is really not that big. It's less than a square foot. 120 square inches is less than a square foot. So how many square yards is that going to be? A fraction. Okay. All right. Number uh, four. And usually, and this is kind of a spoiler alert, but usually when we have unit multiplier problems on practice tests, the real test is exactly the same except backwards. I don't know if it is on this, but I think 90% of the time I do this, it's always backwards. So you're probably going to go from square yards to square feet, okay, or square inches. So can you handle that? So basically everything's upside down. All right, moving on to number four. Life. 
buy each other. Kids these days. All right, number four. The perimeter of a square is 76 inches. Okay, so that means here's the square. We don't know what one side is, but we know that the perimeter is 76. What's the perimeter again? All the way around. So how, what's the shortcut to find the perimeter of a square? Yeah, so you're going to add x four times. The shortcut to adding the same thing four times is what? Just multiply, right? 4x equals what? 76. So now I can find the length of the side. Okay, how do you find the length of the side? How do you find x? Okay? Divide by 4. Divide by 4. So x equals uh, 19. Is that your answer? No, nope, because it asks for the area. Okay. Well, it wasn't a waste of time because you need to know the side length to find the area. How do you find the area of a square? Elkin? Just multiply one side twice. Guys. Yeah, so it's length times width or basically the side times itself since it's a square. And that's actually where we get the term square is when you square something, you multiply it by itself. Well, when you find the area of a square, you have to square that dimension. So area equals x squared. Well, now we know what x is. Area equals 19 squared. What's 19 squared? Does anyone have that? What do you got? Uh, 361 inches squared. 361 square inches. Is that what you guys got? All right, good job. All right, number five. This is worth... Um, two points, okay? Because you wanna write an inequality and a negated inequality. That sounds like a whole lot of confusion or negatedness, negativeness. But first of all, inequality is just like a less than or greater than, or less than or equal to or greater than or equal to statement, okay? It's what you always, what you've been doing. So try not to think about the negated inequality yet. So here's what our graph looks like. It's at zero and that dot like that and it shades to the left. So it's X is something to zero. So which one is it? Yeah, less than because you're, it's shading left. So do you see how this arrow points the same direction as where the shading is going? Okay, so you could translate this shade left of zero, but you're also shading on zero. So you're gonna put a line under it, okay? So remember if that was an open circle, which a lot of times with the practice test versus a test, the t if it's less than or equal to on the practice test, it's probably less than on the test. So if that's an open circle, you don't put the line under the symbol, okay? So that's half done. So there's two ways to say an inequality, okay? Um, you could say what it's not, or you could say what it is. We just said what it is. It's less than or equal to. So that means it's not the third one. There's only three things. It can be, it can be less than, equal to, or greater than. So we just said it could be both of these. So what is it not? It's not that, okay? So here's what you could write down, okay? So it's just three, this is, what's this axiom called again? Remember the fun word? You can impress your friends if you know this. You guys know what the first part of a coordinate on a coordinate plane is? What's the X coordinate called? The Y word is ordinate. Ordinate. That's the easy one. Yeah, it's like abscess, but abscissa, right? Good. So this is this one. Are really impress your friends. This is called the it starts with the T, something axiom. You remember? I made a big deal of this when we talked about it. Because you have to say it in a really 
snobby way because they make yourself smart, sound smart. This is the trichotomy axiom. <laughs> trichotomy. Isn't that a fun word? Sounds smart. This is a trichotomy axiom. So basically we said it's, le it's less than or equal to. So the only thing that it's not that we didn't include is that greater than. So that's what we're going to get rid of. So if this was less than zero, then you would say it's not greater than or equal to. Okay. You just put the rest of the trichotomy axiom in there and then you cross it out. Yes. Do you put the line under it on the um, reverse of it? No, because if you put the line over it, you're saying it's not equal to zero. Well, it is. It could be equal to or less than zero. So the only thing left is the greater than. So that's what you, so you can't, so that will never happen. If you're writing an inequality and an inequality, if you include the line and the inequality, you don't include the line and the in, negated and vice versa. If there's no line in the inequality, then you have to put the line in the negated because you're saying it's not equal to zero. So, okay. All right. Um, moving on. Number six. This is a. This is kind of a where, where a lot of people either think this is really easy or they confuse it, and this is normal. I've tried several techniques of teaching to help people, but this is called um, functional notation. So find g of negative four. So this does not mean g times x. And this does not mean g times negative four. This means the function of x is to square it, multiply it by negative two and subtract two. Okay, so if I plug in negative four for x, then all I'm gonna do is substitute it right there. Okay, so the easiest thing to do is just cross this out. When you take your test, cross that out and cross that out. And then just plug and chug. You're gonna evaluate. You're gonna plug it in for X and multiply it out. So remember what, what happens when you plug in a negative number? Put parentheses around it. Because if you don't, uh, you're gonna get it wrong. Okay, if you do your own math correctly, you'll get it wrong. <laughs> because if you don't have parentheses there, it's not negative four squared, it's negative four squared, which is very different, okay? So what's negative four squared? 16, positive or negative? Positive, okay? Um, so everything else I'm gonna keep the same times 16 minus 2. All right. Next in order of operations, we got multiplication. So what's negative 2 times positive 16? Negative 32 and then minus 2. What's negative 32 minus 2? Negative 34. Good job. So don't forget, you can chicken scratch. This is confusing to you, chicken scratch. And okay, now it's two negatives being added, so negative 34. Very good. All right, how are we doing? Okay, good. Let's keep going. Number seven, here we go. So this is just following the steps of these this equ uh, solving equations, okay? Seven looks like this. Three, parenthesis, negative x minus four equals three x plus five, parenthesis, x plus two. So the first step in solving equations to simplify both sides separately, we do have parentheses. That's the first thing you look for when you're asked to simplify. Parentheses are like the enemy of simplifying, okay? So how do we get rid of parentheses? 
distribute. We're going to distribute this three. This three is being multiplied by both things in here. And this five is being multiplied by both things in there. So let's multiply three times X is just negative three X. Three times negative four is negative 12 or minus 12. So far so good. If it helps, you can chicken scratch and put a plus negative 12. It means the same thing. So whatever keeps you from getting confused on these. All right. Um, the only thing we're distributing here is this. Five times X, five X. Five times two, 10. So now we're not quite done with step one because now we have like terms on the same side. So see how this one's okay. This is a variable term and a constant term, so we're done. But over here, we've got two X terms. What's three X and five X simplify to? Eight X. Okay, so now we're done with step one. Step two, if you have variables on both sides, get rid of the smaller one. Which one's the smaller one? Negative three X. Yeah, and even if it was like, if it was a three X and a negative eight X, remember negatives are always smaller. How do you get rid of a negative term? What? You add it, that's right. Um, because you either add or subtract terms, but if you subtract three X from negative three X, you'll end up with a negative six X but we want to cancel this over here and add it over here. Okay, so let's do that, plus three X. And I'm gonna add three X to this side. I'm gonna strategically put it right here because I know I'm gonna add it to that already X over there. So then what am I left with on the left side? Negative 12, don't forget that negative equals 11 X plus 10, okay? Does that feel all right? Step two, step three, eliminate constant term on variable side, this side. Which side is the variable side, the left or the right? The right, and which one is the constant term on the right side? 10, the one without the variable in it. How do you get rid of plus 10? Subtract 10. So negative 12, you're already in the negatives and you subtract 10 more, what do you end up with? Negative 22 equals 11x. Ooh, that's going to work out nice, right? Now, last step, get rid of the variable's coefficient. The coefficient multiplies by the x. How do you get rid of 11? Divide. So x equals negative divided by a positive is negative. And then 22 divided by 11 is 2. So negative 2 is your solution to number 7. Plug it in, see if it works. Um, plug it into your original equation, negative, negative two. So that's positive two minus four is negative two times three is negative six. I have a negative six on the left side. And then three times negative two is negative six plus negative two uh, plus two is negative one times five is negative five plus negative six is negative 11. What did we do wrong? Did we do it wrong? So negative two. Oh yeah, I think I plugged in a negative three or something. Yeah, so you got negative six plus zero, which is negative six. Good job. All right, so it's worth it to check it, but if you check it wrong, make sure you check it a couple times to see if you did it right. Okay, number eight. Same thing, um, we're gonna, there is a shortcut you can take to like get rid of the decimals. You can just multiply everything by like a hundred and it moves the decimals over, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. For now, we can just take out your calculator because it's gonna take some work. Okay. Same thing, there's no parentheses, but there are like terms on the left side. Let's see, there's just constant terms. So on a calculator, you can combine this and this. Remember, this is a negative 0.16. Um, so a 0.4 added to a negative 0.16 is gonna give you a 0.34, right? No, 0.24. 
Yeah. You're combining one that has variable with one that doesn't. Oh, right. Yeah, that is a variable. Sorry. My mask keeps going creeping up into my eyeballs, so it's hard for me to see. Kind of hurts. All right. So yeah, let's combine combine the right thing. So what is that? Point six one x minus. 0.16 equals 12.04. Okay, so now we're done with step one. Step two, if you have variables on both sides, you don't. So we're going to skip step two and go to step three. Get rid of constant term on variable side. Remember, the constant term doesn't have a variable in it. So we're going to get rid of this negative 0.16 by adding it to both sides. That cancels and you're left with 0.61x equals 12.2, right? How do you get rid of that 0.61 to get x by itself? What do you have to do? Divide. So on your calculator, you can divide both sides by 0.61. Let's see. If it was 6.1, then it'd be 2, right? So this would be 20. So what you guys got? X equals 20. You can plug it back in with your calculator, multiply it out, make sure it makes sense. That would be 8. And then confusing stuff, but so we'll plus 4.2. I don't know, I won't do it. Okay. All right. Um, Number nine is just a two-step problem. So first of all, you have to solve for x, and then you plug in x to the next part. So it's like a little scavenger hunt. You have to find x first, and then you have to use it in the next problem. So uh, if x plus 2 minus 5x equals negative 14, what is the value of 2x plus 4? Okay, so don't worry about this yet. We're going to ignore that second part because first of all, we have to figure out what x is. Okay, and most, uh, probably every year, one person solves for X and then moves on because they feel like they're done. They forgot to plug it in. So solve for X first. We've got like terms on the left side. So what's X and negative five X combined to? Four X, or negative four X. Negative four X equals negative, uh, plus two equals negative 14. We can skip step two, right? We don't have variables on both sides. So step three. <coughs> Ew. <laughs> Get rid of the constant on the variable side. So negative 4x I'm left with here equals negative 14 minus another 2 is negative 16. Last step. Get rid of variables coefficient. Don't forget, you have to get rid of that negative 2. So divide by negative four and you get X equals negative divided by negative is positive. All right, so I almost just moved on. I thought I was done, right? But that's not what the question asks. The question does not say what's X. It says, what's the value of two X plus four? So now what do we do? Plug it in right there. So two X plus four. What's two times negative four? Negative eight plus four equals negative four. Oh, I plugged in negative four instead of four. Oh, it's very confused. <laughs> so this is uh, eight plus four, which is 12. Okay, so is that all right? Yes. Wait. Okay, so you did negative four x minus or divided by negative. Okay. 
Yeah, so, so so if you think about just you're getting just getting rid of numbers. So to get rid of that number, that number is multiplying by x, so to get rid of it, you divide it. But if I wanted to get rid of the whole 4x, then I would subtract add or subtract it. Okay, but I just want to get rid of that part of it. Okay? You want to peel off the sticker without getting rid of the paint. Or maybe that's a bad illustration. Okay, number 10. We're just going to solve for this. It's just another equation. So here's what 10 looks like. I'll write it over here. Solve for y. Oh, it's not another equation. So this is, we're just rearranging the furniture here. 2x plus y equals 10. Let me rewrite it. So this has two variables in it. So we can't get like y equals two or something pretty like that. We have to just get y by itself. And then everything else is gonna be a little messy, okay? So it's kind of like when your parents ask you to clean your room and you move the mess to just one corner of it. That's what we're doing. We're just moving all the furniture to one side and we're gonna keep y by itself. So we're still gonna follow these same steps, but now you have to say, all right, it's when you're getting rid of constant terms, those are all the other terms except the, what, what, the ones with y in it, okay? So first step, are there any parentheses? Are there any like terms? Nope, okay, so step two. Wait, oh. If you have variables, now which letters the variable we're trying to solve for? Y. So do you have Y's on both sides? Yeah, which one's the smaller one? No, oh, negative three Y. The negative is always smaller. If you, if you don't do that, you're not gonna get it wrong. It's just gonna be really confusing for you. So get rid of, if there's a negative and a positive, get rid of the negative one. How do you get rid of negative three Y, Elkin? Divide by negative three. So, yes, if we were just wanting to get rid of the three. Oh, wait, wouldn't you add three y? Yes, so we're gonna add three y. So this is the reason I called on you is because this is what you asked earlier. Um, so just make sure when you're at this step, the only time you divide by something is the last step. Okay, when you're solving an equation, that's the last thing you have to get rid of. Okay, but everything else you're like adding or subtracting type of thing, okay? So now we're left with, what is this? 2x plus 4y equals 10. Everybody see that? Okay, now the next step says get rid of the constant term. Now remember the constant term is any term that's in this case, not the variable we're solving for. So what do you have to get rid of? 2x, how do we get rid of 2x? Subtract it. Remember term, the key word is term. Term, the definition of a term is something that's added or subtracted. Okay? So to get rid of a term, you either subtract or add it. So this is positive, so we're going to get rid of it by subtracting it. So we're left with this on this side. That's no problem. But what are we left with on the right side? So just 10 minus 2x. Yeah, because you can't subtract 10 minus 2x, right? Because they're not like terms. So you have to leave it in this ugly way. This is kind of how, why it feels like moving the furniture to one side. We're just moving it all over here and we're gonna deal with those problems later when we figure out what x is, but we're never gonna figure it out. So we're just gonna leave it like that. Last step to solving equations is what? What's the last thing you do? Divide by four. Okay, so then we get y equals, so now we have to divide this whole thing by four, which is doable. You can divide 10 by four and you can divide negative two x by four. Well, it doesn't go in nicely, but you can at least reduce 10 divided by four. What's 10 divided, what's 10 divided by four reduced? 
2.5 or five halves, you can leave it as a fraction. Leave it as a fraction, that's better. Um, all I did was reduce that, okay? Now, it's not, you don't just divide one thing on that side by four, you have to divide everything. So how do you divide this? Yeah, one half X. So two X divided by four is one half X. And remember, subtracted, so you can say like X over two, or one half X. Um, if you get this far, guys, make sure you show your work. If you get this far, then I'll probably give you full credit. So don't erase this when you try to take the next step, but try to take the next step, okay? But this is, this is, this is great. If you can get this far, you've got Y by itself. So Y equals 10 minus two X all divided by four. That's awesome. You can leave it like that. And in science class, most of the time, you, he'll want you to leave it like that. Because then you just plug in stuff for X and then you do the math and then it gives you Y, right? Um, so that's number 10. And that's halfway. So I think we're a little bit behind, but let's see if we can get it. If not, I will keep going while you guys go and it'll be on the video for you. So 11 says factor GCF. Factor means take it out and tell me what you're left with. Don't just tell me what the greatest common factor is. I want you to take out the greatest common factor and then put, do the reverse distributive property. And then tell me what's left in the store after you shop it, out the greatest common factor. So I'm gonna rewrite it here. It's hard for me to see, so tell me if I'm writing this wrong. Okay, did I write that correctly? Okay, greatest common factor is two parts. The, the number and the letters, okay? The number is the hardest part, even though you've been doing it since second grade. Okay, what's the greatest common factor of 5, 10, and 20? What? So 20 would be the least common multiple. So if you were adding fractions with 5, 10, and 20 in the denominator, then you want to pick 20. The greatest common factor is what goes into all of it. So 5 is the greatest common factor. Okay? Now the letters are the easy part. Now you just look for the smallest variable of each letter, or smallest exponent of each letter. What's the smallest exponent of the W's? Squared, right? What's the smallest exponent of the X's? X cubed, smallest exponent of the Y's, Y squared. So if you get this far, half credit, good job but it doesn't say find the GCF. You, you just found the GCF. It says factor the GCF, which means now you took the, you're gonna divide all of these terms by the GCF because we want, we're doing the reverse distributive property. So what do you multiply by this to get this? Write that down. So what do you multiply by GCF, or basically this, to get this, okay? So how do you make this five Y squared X cubed Y look like this? What is this, what is this missing that this has? Well, the five, you don't need to do anything, right? You don't have to multiply anything by five to get five, but what do you multiply by W squared to get W cubed? A W. W squared times W is W cubed. What do you multiply by X cubed to get X to the fourth? X. X. And what about Y squared? Nothing. So that's what you're left with. So if you distributed this, you would get that. All right, now we're gonna make all these signs the same. So what do you multiply by this to get 10? What do you multiply by five to get 10? Two. Two. So you're, when you're dealing with letters, you're kind of in subtraction mode right? Because two, 
you, you need to one more W you're like, so it's kind of like you're adding, but you got to get out of subtraction mode when you're five, when you're doing the, your numbers five times, you're still multiplying times two and then W stay the same X cubed to get to X to the fourth is another X Y squared to get to Y cubed is another Y. Okay. Five to get to 20. Four, right? W squared to get to W to the fourth. X cubed stays the same. Y squared times Y squared to get to Y to the fourth. So this is your final answer. So you need to check this. Make sure, multiply it out and make sure you get what you started with. This is called factoring. So when I say factor 21, what are you gonna tell me when I say factor 21? Three, three times seven. You're not gonna say three. So when I say factor this, you're not gonna give me one of the factors, you're gonna give me both factors. This is this times this equals this, okay? All right, um, every year somebody just does that. And, and that's just normal. Just don't be that person, okay? Factor it out. If you don't know how to do that, then yeah, give me at least that because then you'll get half credit for finding the GCF. Okay, um, number 12. This is kind of like what we did in number 10 where we divided both of them by that. So I'm gonna have you do it that way. Instead of factor it out, two X squared, Y squared. So if you're able to write on your test, I would recommend doing this. Uh, just draw two circles like we did in number 10. And we're going to divide this by this. And we're going to divide this by this. Okay, this is a this is like a division problem, like the distributive property of division. So you're not just dividing one of these by that, you're dividing both of them. So when it says simplify, we're just kind of reducing what we can reduce. Yes. Okay. So Eden taught me this. I don't know if it's correct, but don't you like, can't you like split it in half and put 2x squared y squared on like either side to divide them? Um, well, you could, and this is the way Saxon teaches you to do it, is factor out the greatest common factor there. So which is 2x squared y squared, just like we did above here. And then you can but see how you can't cancel these 2x squared over y squared because this is being subtracted. This is subtracting something. So I think the easiest part is to just create two division problems. So what happens when you divide 2x squared y squared divided by 2x squared y squared? What do you get? What do you get when you get when you divide that? Uh, one minus four x squared. Yep. So this is the same thing over the same thing. That's just one. And then we're just going to reduce this. Eight divided by two is four. X to the fourth divided by x squared is just x squared. And y squared y to the fourth divided by y squared is y squared. Okay. The other way to do it is to factor. If you factor out the GCF, the GCF is 2x squared y squared. And then you're left with four, 1 minus 4x squared y squared, all divided by 2x squared y squared. So now see that now since this is being multiplied by something and then divided by that same thing, then I can cancel it. And here's my answer. So there's two ways to do it. You need to just pick one that works for you, okay? So I would recommend practicing this at least one more time before you take your test. Make sure you get the right answer, okay? Um, all right, now let's, uh, let's do, the next problem I think is easy, it just takes a long time. So to simplify this, you got the same variables being multiplied and then divided. So you, there's some canceling that can happen, but I think the easier way to do this is to bring everything upstairs and then figure it out. 
Okay? So you have all these different variables being multiplied and divided. So whenever you see more than one variable on, that's being multiplied or divided, you can simplify it. Okay? So number 13, a squared, a to the fourth, r, t to the negative third, all divided by t to the negative two, t to the negative four, and then r to the negative three. So the, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring all this stuff upstairs. What happens when you bring variables upstairs? What do you have to do? Don't they turn back to positive? Yep. The, so, yeah, if they're negative, they turn to positive. But if they were positive down here, they're negative up there. You just have to change the sign of the exponent. So then be, this becomes t to the positive 2, t to the positive 4, and r to the third. Now I can ignore it. So now I, what do I do with the exponents? Yeah, you just add the exponents of the same letters. So this is a, 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 a. So that's just a to the sixth, right? And then this R has a one, so that combines with that. And then all these T's can add together. So my final answer is A to the six. R to the one plus three is four. And then T to the negative three plus six is three. So there's your answer, okay? So when you multiply variables, you add their exponents. Two steps. Bring everything downstairs, upstairs, and then add the exponents. Can you guys handle that? Again, it's it's not hard. It's just it just takes a long. It kind of takes a while, but it's hard to remember what to do. I guess. Okay, but the but you know how to add. You know how to change the sign of an exponent. That's all you're doing in this problem. Okay, number fourteen. So this is just distributive property on steroids here. So I'm going to rewrite it like this because you can only multiply fractions with fractions. So I'm going to turn that first thing into a fraction and then we're distributing. So don't distribute yet. All over a minus four B squared over a cubed. Okay, so we're going to distribute first. Uh, technically, you could like, oh, I can bring this up and like make it easier. You could do that if you wanted to. Um, but yeah, it, yeah, you could do that. Bring that a up and it becomes a to the negative one. Bring this a cubed up, it becomes a to the negative third. And then you don't have to worry about fractions at all. But fractions aren't terrible. You just multiply the top times the top and the bottom times the bottom. So that's what I'm going to do. So a cubed, b to the negative third, a to the negative fifth, b to the negative two, all over one times a is a. All I did was squish the tops together and squish the bottoms together. Okay, now do the same thing over here, minus, I'm gonna put the number out in front, four, a cubed, b to the negative third, b squared, all over one times a cubed is a cubed. Everyone see that first step? I just squished the tops together and squished the bottoms together. So now we can do what we did on the last problem. And so I'm going to bring this A upstairs and this A cubed upstairs. So what's A, what happens when you bring the A upstairs? What does it become? Negative. Not negative A. A to the negative one. You don't change the sign of the A, you change the sign of the exponent. What's the exponent if you don't see an exponent? One, so when you bring that up, it becomes a to the negative one. And this becomes a to the negative third. Now we can ignore those because everything's on the top now. So now what do we do? Yeah, so now we just add the exponents of the a's and add the exponents of the b's. But there's gonna, they're gonna be separate terms. So this is like two problems now. So keep the terms separate. So let's see, the three and the negative five and the negative one. So that's a to the negative three. And then b to the negative three and negative two is negative five. 
minus 4 a to the let's see 3 and negative 3 is 0 and b negative 3 and 2 is negative 1. okay so your solutions manual might have something different well first of all this, what's a to the zero just one so that cancels so then you're left with this now let's see what the directions say write the answer with all exponents positive are the exponents positive? No. So what do we do to make them positive? Elkin? Downstairs. Yep. So now we bring the negative exponents downstairs. So these all have to go downstairs. So that means nothing's left on top. So just this has to go downstairs. So just the four is left on top. So let's see here. What happens when nothing's left on top? What do you have to put on top? A one, so this is one over a to the positive three and b to the positive five minus four over b to the negative one becomes just a b to the one on the bottom. Do you need that one? Nope, so there it is. So I probably created a little bit more work for myself by bringing everything upstairs, but that was easier for me because I don't wanna deal with dividing and subtracting exponents and negative numbers that just makes it more difficult all right i'm gonna keep moving those are probably the hardest ones on the test um simplify by adding like terms so we have to figure out which ones are like terms so there's three terms here you see the three terms because there's two subtraction signs so there's three things being added or subtracted so what i'm going to do is I'm just going to write everything first with everything on top. So that first one, I'm gonna leave the same, 2x cubed, x to the negative one, y, y squared, z to the negative fourth, minus, I'm gonna write everything on top, seven x squared, y cubed, and then z to the negative fourth, minus x squared y to the fourth and then z to the negative fourth y to the negative one so see how i put everything downstairs upstairs on um, just the last two terms because the first one already had it so now we just add the exponents no problem so this becomes a two x to the let's see squared so x squared y to the, let's see, one plus two is three, and then still that z to the negative fourth, okay? Minus seven x squared y cubed z to the negative fourth. I didn't have to add any exponents there. The only exponents I add here are the y's. So this is minus x squared y to the third z to the negative fourth. So, now I see that, okay, two, three, negative four, two, three, negative four. They're all like terms. So when you add like terms, you just add the coefficients and you don't touch the variables. So I'm left with two minus seven minus one, right? When you don't see a coefficient, it's one. So two minus seven is negative five minus another one is negative six. And then don't touch the variables. When you're adding or subtracting, don't touch the variables. So there's your final answer. Okay, so we did have to clean up each term first to be able to recognize if we even had like terms. And if for some reason this was a positive four over here, then th that just has to stay by itself. And you can combine these two, but not that. Okay. All right, number uh, 16. Find the least common multiple. Now, this is where we just need to look at the biggest exponent and what these two numbers can go into. So the least common multiple is a, a big number. Even though it says least, it's kind of counterintuitive. So what do both 9 and 16 go into? Oh, 9 and 6. What do both 9 and 6 go into? 18. Okay, so the number part's done. That's like finding a common denominator. Okay, 
the next part is now you're looking for the biggest exponent of each letter. What's the biggest exponent of the X's? Cubed and Y is cubed. So write this down, biggest exponent. Okay, so find the least common multiple the normal way, what you've been doing since second grade, and then the variables, biggest exponent, okay? All right, I'm gonna to try to whip out at least one front more problem and then I'll keep going. You guys can leave even though I'm still talking. Don't worry if it's gonna seem rude, but you're not rude. Okay, so number 17, you're subtracting. You already have common denominators. So you just subtract the numerators. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to put, um, oh, by the way, my Algebra 2 students got this problem right. Remember, we were going to see if they got it right or wrong. They did. So I was very proud of them. So when you subtract fractions, you still keep the same denominator, and then you just combine like terms. 5y minus y is 4y. Negative x minus minus. You see that? That's why the parentheses are there. You're subtracting, subtracting. So negative x minus negative 2. If it helps, you can do this. Black, black, black. So chicken scratch. So x, negative x and x is just x. Okay, so you're done with 17. You didn't really have to do anything because they already had the same denominator. So you just had to simplify the top. Okay. Number 18 looks kind of simple, but you still have to find a common denominator. What's the common denominator of A, B, and 9? Well, you basically have to make this all look the same. So what does an A need that will make it look like this? Well, it needs a B and a 9, right? So whatever you do to the bottom, do to the top. What does the B need to make it look like 9AB? It needs a 9 and it needs an A, right? And what does this need? This needs an A and a B. So write it out like this, whatever you do to the bottom to make it the common denominator, which is the least common multiple of these two th these things, and then simplify it. So this is 18B plus 9A plus 5AB. There's no like terms on top. So just leave it like that and you're done. Okay. See you guys. All right. Number 19. Find the area of the shaded version. So area equals parallelogram minus that weird shape there. So area of the parallelogram is just 10 by 6. And then this guy is going to be, let's see, what is the radius of that circle? 2. So that's uh, pi r squared plus hmm, base of the right triangle is 3 by four, three times four divided by two. This is three. This is four if the radius is two. So then you get four pi plus six. See ya. So 60 minus four pi plus six, you can multiply that out. So that's 12.56. 60 minus 12.56 plus six. Um, so what is that? 18.56. So you end up with like 41.44, something like that. And that is square meters. So I'm still recording. I didn't make it through the test, so I'm still recording. So.
algebra one class. <laughs> I did just tell him that you uh, I was very proud of you for getting that problem. So, oh, right, right. Yeah. So number 20, you're finding the surface area. Surface area is the top, which is a circle, plus the bottom, which is the same circle, plus this lateral area. Okay, I'm still recording for the last one. So that is just a rectangle there. So the dimension of that rectangle is the circumference. And the height is what they give you, the height of the, of the cylinder, which is uh, 13 miles high, wow. Um, so that's 13. And the radius is 12. So to find the circumference, remember it's two pi r or pi times diameter. So it's 24 pi. So the area of this guy is gonna be 24 pi times 13. Somebody wanna do that math for me? <laughs> so, so the uh, top is gonna be pi r squared. So one, the radius is 12, so 144 pi plus another 144 pi plus 24 pi times 13 is or 13 times 24 is what? Uh, 24 pi times 13 is 312 pi. So 312 pi. In terms of pi. Awesome. Yeah. So you can leave it in terms of pi if you want. What is that? 288 plus 512. Ooh, that's like uh, 800, isn't it? So 800 pi. Did I do that right? Yeah. Okay, and so if you, you can leave it in terms of pi, or you can tell me what 800 times 3.14-ish is. So I'm going to put squigglies because it's not exactly. And that is uh, 2,512. 2,512-ish. Yeah. 2, and this is square miles. I don't know what that thing is, but it's huge. All right, good job. Good luck on the test. Black math. Give me some math and I'll give you some flack. Black